everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really pretty. I'm going to call it a pop-up display card because I think it is that. It's something to be displayed. This is what I'm calling a showstopper card and that's why I've done this one for a wedding because I think it's that special that, I mean, come on, who wouldn't want to receive that? It's beautiful. So I've used the Bright Rosa butterfly here. So you've got the back of the butterfly and then I've used this lovely sparkle. I'm thinking I might make the body pink. So again, you'll see if I do that in the video, in the photos. It's got the Forever and Always. I'll show you all the papers that I've used for this one. And then it's got this grey board or chipboard base, which I have used my metal corners there just to protect it. And then on the back, you have this lovely message, which is one of the Christina Griffiths sentiments. And again, I'll show you that in a moment. I've continued the same theme on the back, so it all ties together. And then the great thing is, is that this one folds completely flat like this, and then I have this matching envelope, which I've done in a very similar way. I'm going to turn it over because it's always better to put your anything detailed, pop it in your envelope upside down, and that way you won't risk getting anything caught. All folds flat and nice and compact in your envelope there. So that is what we're going to be making today. I'll quickly show you what I used for that card because I'm doing a different style today. So this is the butterfly and it's from the Butterfly Band die set from Bright Rosa. This is the Sentiments which I've shared before. It's a really lovely one and it's got that beautiful, you know, wedding or engagement anniversary kind of sentiment there. And then you've seen me use these other ones as well, but all that will be linked below. And then it's this paper pack here. So it's the Paper Addicts Forever and Always. It's a really pretty pack and I will share a playlist with those cards. I think I've done two cards possibly now and I'll share that there. If not, I'll just share this, the card on its own using that one. Okay, so for today's card, I'm going to be using this stamp set, which was free in one of the creative stamping magazines from May 2017. It is one of my favourite stamp sets and I actually made my favourite all-time card with this one. Some of you may remember this one, it's the original floating pop box card. It's a really popular card style that I've done and many of you have, have made your, your versions of it. But it is using this die set, uh, sorry, this stamp set and I love it. I love colouring it, it's just something about this. If someone says to me, what's your favourite card? This is the one, so I never gave it away. I've kept this one and I've you know, I made this, well, it would have been around May 2017. So this is the card here and it's gorgeous. And I'll share that card style up there as well if you've missed it, because it's really easy to make. But you'll see there, that sailor, he looks like he's floating. Now, the reason I pulled it out again, because lots of you always ask where the products from that I use, Craft Stash actually have this set on there because Creative Stamping is part of Practical Publishing and they also are part of Craft Stash. So they have this on their website and they've split it into two halves, a bit like I have mine stored actually. And I believe they're $3.99 each, which I think is really good because this is an A4 stamp set and they always say they're worth about £20 or something in the magazine. So I will link it below. It is a lovely stamp set because you have so many lovely elements to kind of tie together. So I thought it would look really good for this card. The sentiment for the back, so I've already done it here, wishing you the best day ever. And that's from this one here, which is the Daisy, Ditsy and Dotty. <laughs> it's craft work cards. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, here we are. Sorry. Of course it is. It's Daisy, Ditsy and Dotty, I guess. But yeah threw me then, I thought it was meant to be on something else. Anyway, paper pad I'm using is this one. It's another favorite whenever I make any kind of underwater theme cards. I don't know if it's still available, it's from the works, but I will link it if possible, because I know there's some other websites that do also stock this uh, make and create. They're lovely papers. Okay, we'll go through all the detail towards the end, but I've already gone ahead and colored all of my pieces using the, these are using the Arteza, Twee markers and I would have already shared a kind of review on them but look how lovely these images are and these pens are actually really nice they're like a felt tip but they're blendable really nice to use so I will link in a quick high-speed video of me coloring in these stamps now
Okay, so for the envelope, you want a piece that's 11 by 11, so I've just selected this nice wave effect, and it has that kind of droplet look on the back, but this is going to be the, the envelope front, so we'll get to that at the end. Okay, so for the main card, you want a piece that's 5.5 by 11 and 3 quarters, which is the default A4 length. Please make sure it is closer to the 11 and 3 quarters, because that last quarter inch is going to be your tab. Okay, so along the long side, you want to score at 5.5, seven and a half, nine and a half, and eleven and a half. Okay, so you'll see that I've got this quarter inch tab. So just fold and burnish those score lines because this is going to come around. We're going to put double sided tape or liquid glue and it's going to stick on like so. Then you want a piece of acetate that's going to come off that and this measures four and three quarters by three. And along the four and three quarter side, you want to score it a quarter of an inch and two and a quarter. Okay, and you'll notice your acetate will naturally kind of lift up, so just go with that and fold and burnish. Okay, so you will have this shape. So you'll have this little quarter inch tab here, and then this longer piece, and this will be a two inch section here. All right. We'll go into that in a bit more detail in a moment. Then your mats and layers, because you kind of want to stick well most of these down actually before you actually can put it together because it's a bit easier. So this one here is your main kind of back piece. If you imagine that's going to be like that. Okay. Now you can do it as one big piece, but I like having that as a separate separate frame and then the piece inside here as a separate frame. Okay, so it's entirely up to you. So this piece measures, you'll see what I mean when we put it together, five and a quarter by three and a quarter. And then I have this piece, these are all the same size, but I've done this one because it's going to go on the bottom. Let me put this cube together. This one's going to go in here. So this, these are optional, these pieces. Again, once you see me put it together, you can decide what you want. But because then this is going to be the base, I just thought it was nice to have the two kind of same together so it's optional but you want four pieces that are one and three quarters by five and a quarter so they're all the same width okay so then these ones will go one on the top one on the front make sure I get my waves the right way that way and then this one will go on the back inside so I like that that one's framed separately to this one but if you want to do one big piece then you would need a piece that's five and a quarter by five and a quarter because this is a five and a half by five and a half square. Okay. So what we do is we stick those and actually do your back as well. It's just the base that's the last bit. So this here is a piece of five and a quarter by five and a quarter, and this is five by five. So stick your sentiment or stamp your sentiment story, stick it over there, and then you'll stick that whole piece to the back here. And then I'm going to stick my pieces that are going to go inside here. So when you bring it around, okay, this is your top one with the tab. This bottom one here is where I'm going to stick this blue one. So inside here. It's just a bit easier to do while it's flat. If you want to, you know, hold on until it's together so you know exactly where you're going, then you can. So I'm just popping that one in there. And then one of these is going to go here and I'm just going to stick it right down so it's got the same border as this piece. So if you look here, there's my score line. I've got that one eighth of an inch. I want to do that the same this side of the score line. That way when you stick it down and you bring this over and around, it will create the same border. Again, if you want to wait till it's together, you can. I just think it's a bit easier to stick it all when it's flat. So I think they're that way up, yeah. So I'm going to bring that one down. So I'm just basically just making sure it looks the same as this one here, like so, okay? So you should have your tab at the bottom, then two that are empty, one where you've put your decorative paper, and then one which is within that five and a half by five and a half square, okay? Then I'm going to grab some of my thin red tape. So this is the quarter inch red liner tape, and you're going to run it over that tab so it should be exactly the same size as the tape if you don't have this thin tip tape then use a liquid glue okay now the easiest way to stick this is you've got one two three okay stick this over the first one and then this piece is going to come right over okay 
So basically you're just folding over the one with the tab and that one, just fold one over, okay? Then bring that whole one over on itself and then you will have a perfect square shape, okay? And you'll see there you get like a white frame around that so it looks the same as this. Okay, next we want to stick that one over there and then one on the top piece. Don't stick one on the front yet because we're going to stick our acetate down first and then that one will conceal it. So I'm just going to stick those down. Okay, so this is what you'll have right now. Then grab that piece of acetate and along that little quarter inch tab I'm going to run some red tapes. Okay, so it's just on that quarter inch piece there. Then take the backing off. Don't stick the bottom one yet. It's easy to attach. It's easy to attach the tape to that in a moment. What you want to do is fold it in half so that's running flat. Okay, so there's my there's my sticky bit here, and I've just folded the whole thing in half so this bottom bit will be longer. All right. Flip it over so the sticky side is facing down. So I've got. I'm trying to make sure you can see it. So this is the sticky side here. You're going to line this folded side up with the top of this card, okay? And make sure that you've got an even overhang on both sides there. And then just stick it down. So if I bring it up, what you'll have is this, like this, see? So that's that bit folded down and that's stuck. So now you'll be able to fold that along its score line so it's like this. And then we can stick the rest down on here. And now when you fold it up, whatever's hanging over here, okay, so just bring it over that piece there, that's what you want to stick down. So what you need to do is just put one kind of strip of tape along the bottom. I made sure there was enough kind of going into this area so it's easy for people to kind of see. Okay, keep everything flat and then stick that one down. So now when we bring this down, everything comes down together and it's this front piece here that we will be attaching all of our kind of pop-out pieces onto. Then with this piece, you can now stick that over your acetate and everything gets concealed and it looks nice and neat. I'm going to run some tape along the top part of this and probably along the middle as well, just because I'm sticking some of this over this acetate, I want it to stick because the, the liquid glues tend to peel off any of your acetate or, you know, a plastic surface. So I am also going to run some liquid glue either side. And then I can stick that. Now we've got that pop-up card. Now you can have it closed that way up but then you see the base when the person takes it out of the envelope and obviously it would fit in a smaller envelope but also all your pop-up pieces will come up over this part. So I think it's easier to have it fold like that because that way your base is underneath so that when they pull it out of the envelope they're greeted with all that lovely decoration. Okay so then we'll move on to the base because again you want to kind of get that put down first. Now this is three no two mil gray board it's the stuff from every crafts a pound that i always use don't worry if it's not as thick as this maybe just put a few layers of like a cereal box together or just a strong card stock you want something that basically is going to help land this card because it, it just topples over it needs to have a base and i just thought that turned it into this real nice display kind of style card so this piece measures two and a half by six yeah so then you want your pattern paper exactly the same size, okay, two and a half by six. Now if you want to wrap your pattern paper around this like you would the cover and the, the back of a mini album, then you can do. But what I did, just for a bit of speed really, is I went around the edges with a marker pen in a blue, just to tie it all together. I actually quite like that because by the time you then add your little decorative corner on, I think it all looks really nice. So choose your pattern paper you don't have to put one on the bottom but then that's what they see so I just think it's nice to finish everything off so I'm going to add my glue onto the base you can add it onto the paper if you want it doesn't matter again if you don't have liquid glue you can use double-sided tape okay if you do get anything overhanging a little bit just grab your scissors and you can just go in and just trim off it's literally a slither 
but you don't want it kind of catching really. Okay, so now I'm going to add my little metal corner protectors. Now, if you don't have these, if you've got any silver mirrored cardstock, I would say cut a square that's about half an inch squared and then cut it on the diagonal so you get two triangles and pop the little triangles on the corner. And I have said that before in other videos and that will look nice as well, okay? So I'm gonna, this is the top, so I'm gonna pop it over like that, flip it over and this is the side that you hammer on. So I will turn off the sound, okay? And there's one of the corners. So I'm just gonna go around now and do that on the others. Okay, so now I've got that nice finished base and then all you need to do is pop glue all on the bottom of your card and then it will sit perfectly within the corners. I will put the measurements of these particular corners in my blog because obviously if you go too big then your card is going to overlap onto them. These fit perfectly. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So I'm just making sure it's all secure and straight. So if I bring this up now, you see the corner of the card fits perfectly into the corner of those metal corners. Okay, so I've got a nice even border there. Okay, and now that card just stands up so much better. It really does. And once you start adding stuff onto it, that all helps as well. So that brings me over nicely to all of this stuff here. So I have mainly use the stamp set so even that sentiment happy birthday mate but then I did have some other kind of nautical themed dies so I've done the bird there which I'm going to have just kind of slightly coming off the top I don't want it to come off too much because I don't want it to not fit in the envelope and I might have to can't really see it there I might actually have it floating more so on this part so then I've also done this hat little sailor's hat so I just die cut it in white gold and black and then pieced it back together to get those effects and then this one here is this anchor which is really cool and I'm probably going to have these pieces along the bottom with this rope so what I will do here is wrap it around my fingers a few times like so and then kind of twist it in the middle and it just looks like some rope that's been kind of you know Oh, sailor's rope <laughs> and I'll probably have that there with the anchor kind of over the top so it's got a bit of texture to this card as well which I really like but the fun part is this guy here so he's my center along with love the lighthouse and the boat so because they're both quite the same height I'm going to have one either side so I'm probably going to have like that and like that and they're going to stick on the acetate like this so he is floating, he's popping out from the front. I think it's going to look really lovely with this effect. And then I have the message in a bottle, which is going to, be, going to go along the bottom there. Actually, I probably have that maybe there, because I want it to come down. You want it to overlap this kind of bend here, okay, just a little bit. And then you've got the acetate behind to then have maybe that there. I've got the seahorse there. And I've got this starfish. Can you see? Look at that. It just looks so, so pleasing. I love this. And then we will have the anchor and everything else. So anything that you stick down on, you could stick it all on itself like this. So just put little bits of glue behind it so you create one big topper. I'm going to do it all separately because I feel I've got a bit more freedom and I can move things around more. So the, the initial one, I'm going to apply red tape because, again, you're sticking it to that acetate. So I'm just going to run a strip in the centre of this. Actually, I'm not going to go near the top because that's going to overhang. So you don't want to have any tape there. So we're going to have him. If you get your centre one down first, and because I've only put a thin strip right through the middle there, I can tuck things behind him. And like I said, make sure your tape doesn't go up past this acetate because when you go to fold it flat, it would stick and then it won't pop up. Okay. So I'm now going to carry on and stick all this down. I'll pop it on high speed. I'll try and keep it like this so you can see me working. I'll put that tape behind there. There we go, that's a bit better.
Okay, so there's the decoration done. I didn't end up putting the sailor's hat because he does have one on. I didn't really want to double up on anything. So the anchor, there is no anchor up there and the rope and so on and so forth. I did decide to put the seagull there or the gull in the background just because I've put this on foam adhesive and that's now lifted and I, it does, it creates a shadow and you can see it a bit better. I love it, I really do. Anything I make with this stamp set, I just enjoy a lot. I enjoy colouring it and I hope you like that quick little video that I've done showing you how I've done my colouring. And then on the back, you just have loads and loads of space there to be able to write a message. That is quite big. You don't have to obviously have it like that, but um, I think it looks really, really cute. So I hope you like it. I'm now gonna show you how to quickly do the envelope. Okay, so this is that piece of 11 by 11. So using the punch board, you wanna follow, it's a six by eight card when it's folded flat, okay? Because it will be going that way, okay? Like I said, you can go that way. If you wanna have a message on there, you can, but I don't know, it's, it would still be the same. It should still work out roughly the same height. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, you should take into account the top of that bit of the, um, the boat there so it's it's up to you but personally I prefer it like that because I think when they pull it out they see the message and all that kind of stuff so it's entirely up to you but you will want to follow the six by eight so it's 11 by 11 card or paper that I've got here and you want to do the first score line at four and seven eighths of an inch so four and seven eighths of an inch I'm lining up my card and I'm scoring oh and this is from the same paper pack so again I like to rotate and do both opposites and then finish on this side. So you're just lining up this little kind of track here with the corner of that card. And then this line should meet up perfectly with it. And then all the way around to the next one, slide it along, punch like so. Okay. As always, I will link that punch ball. Very, very handy to have. Perfect when you want to make bigger cards because then you, you know, you've got your envelope sorted. So I'm just gonna fold and burnish the score lines and then obviously if it's directional pattern make sure that you just you know you've got it the right way down so this is the base now that we're sticking so I'm going to run some tape along here take the backing off and as I always say when you make a card that's a little bit bulky and you're still popping it in an envelope put the card in Okay, so there's my card. This is such a beautiful, oh, I love it so much. <laughs> Pop it in like so and then bring the sides over and that way your card will definitely fit in the envelope. So then you can gently bring up the bottom and it will just naturally kind of, you know, stick to the shape of that card, the bulk of that card. And now that will come in and out perfectly and it just, it does, it finishes it off beautifully. It makes such a lovely card. And like I said, I'm so pleased with this. Once it's rearranged, there we go. It stands up really, really nicely. So now I'm just gonna run some double-sided tape along here. And then that's ready to take off when I do go to send it. And then for the front, just because it's pattern paper, it's always easier to have a little white piece. This is just four by two. I've done this on most of the envelopes and you can just stick it on the front Make sure you get it in the middle, at least that way you've got somewhere. If you want to do it bigger, obviously you can, but I tend to, I wouldn't put this in the mail just like this. I would put this inside like a brown envelope or something. It's too nice and I just worry that people, yeah, these things happen, don't they? You hear sad stories of people's posts being, you know, opened or not even turning up because people are taking it out. So yeah, there we go. So there are the two cards. I wanted to do two very different styles just so that you can look past. I think if I just put this one up, maybe sometimes people struggle to see past how they can turn it into something more masculine. And that's why I thought I'd do two different extremes. So it's a bit like when you go and look around a house and you see awful decor or something, you sometimes can't see past that. It's the same thing. So I'm trying to, whenever I do double cards, do them very, very different. So you get to see two different examples. Um, I can't make my mind up. I love both just as well. I think they look beautiful. Like I said, they're a showstopper. They're a display card. So, you know, these are ones to take your time on and uh, yeah. There you have it, two really special cards. So I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. Please give me a thumbs up as always if you have and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching, bye.